Welcome to Murder in Retrograde, everybody. Hello. How are you, Jenna? so good to see your beautiful face. I love doing this just so I can see you. I know. It really is nice to see another adult human. Uh Uh-oh. Was that loud? Sorry. No. My phone is... Oh, geez. There's so many wires. I I can't move a muscle or I will become entangled forever. I just can't help Um, looking at your your tree that you have. Or what is that? Garland? This is called Cypress. Thank you very much. (laughs) Cypress Garland. I feel like you're in a forest. It's it's so dry from the fires yesterday that it's like, I need need to get it out of here. It's about to burst into flames, especially since I have lights around it. That's really smart. (laughs) Anyway, I'm just very festive. It's the German in me. I can't help it. I know. Trust me. I would have the same thing, but because we're having worked into our house, I was like, I'm not dragging all this stuff in just to remove it all in a week, so... Just yeah, no, but have you done the Trader Joe's little gingerbread house? Oh, no, I would recommend so, that. It's really small. Okay, so let me tell you why. First of all, I don't have the patience for that stuff, but my mother-in-law is going to try and make their own from scratch Oh gosh, at her house. I mean, she went it's to It's going to be amazing. It's going to be amazing. She went to pastry school for like a minute, so I think she, if anyone can do it, I feel like she can do it, so. Oh, yeah, I can't wait to see it. So that's that's why we don't have one. And plus I don't have the yeah. patience for it whatsoever. Yeah, I know. I, it, yeah. Now that I'm thinking about it, we did get <laughs> into a few fights because it's like, it's so sticky and it gets all over the place. Anyway, whatever. It, was... it doesn't, and it doesn't work. And yeah. Right. So, so yeah, that's what I've been doing. Just trying to occupy my children as much as possible with, you know, gingerbread houses and things like that. Just plugging away at being a mom, part-time teacher, maid, chef, gardener, astrologer, podcaster, all grocery of forager. Dude, the grocery stores are like a whole other, it's like the second we went into lock, well, I am going to say lockdown loosely because in my opinion, it's a bunch of horse shit, but <laughs> the second that we're in lockdown, the lines are out of control out of control. The lockdown that only applies to us and no politicians and nobody with money and it's California is becoming very crazy for those of you in other parts. It's just it's not making a lot of sense. Like the, yeah, they announced the lockdown. I told you I tried to go to Trader Joe's. I had to go to three Trader Joe's. There were 50 people in line. I couldn't go shopping. Like it's just you know, I wish I mean, listen, we all have probably our own feelings about this whole COVID situation. I wish we would have followed Italy's lead and done exactly what they did, locked us down fully and completely the first time around, given people times that they have to go to the grocery store, and you're in literal lockdown. I think we would be in a much different place and not yeah. have to do this half, like, lem- toe. our toe is in lockdown, but then everything else yeah, is Yeah, there's up too for- much room for somebody to be like, yeah, I think this is okay. You yeah. know, it's there's too much gray, and I keep thinking about because we always think about true crime, like all of the things that are happening right now, you know, in closed houses and things like that, that um, I'm just constantly worried about. So I hope it doesn't last too long, but I I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. And listen, like, I, I think the people are, it's so interesting because I've seen so many comments like, well, ICUs or this, that. It's like, it's not even about that. I think that's what they tell us, but the real situation is there's people working in healthcare that are going to be burned out. So if you get in a car accident, you're screwed. Yeah. That's what the real situation that we're looking at. And I just wish that people could like get it around their freaking head. It's not about you and it's not about, oh, here we go. Mom life. Hi. (laughs) What? It's our first guest, everybody. (laughs) Oh, great. You can't do it yourself right now. Really? Okay. Go. Do we have a number two situation? Oh, uh huh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> of course, it's so perfect. Mm. Um, you know what we can do? Why don't you tell all the people of the astrology stuff? Yeah, I will go okay. wipe a bottom. So let's. That's what I've always it. wanted. My own TV show. <laughs> go, go. Okay, I'm I'll fine. Be right back. Do your astrology thing, girl. I'll be right back. Please do. Okay, we are still wiping bottoms, both of us. Yes, yes, we are. It's a lovely thing being a mother, isn't it? Nobody told me it lasted for years and years and years. Okay, so our astrology is bonkers, bonkers in December. 
This week, things got really hazy. Last week, we had the beautiful new moon and lunar eclipse in Gemini that brought us at least a moment of clarity and perspective, but that quickly faded into the mucky week that we're in now. And this week is mostly messy because on Monday evening, the last quarter moon was exactly when the sun in Sagittarius formed a square with the moon in Virgo. And if I've taught you murder and retrograde uh, fans, nothing else about astrology. Hopefully I've told you that squares are usually a red flag of choppy waters ahead, if nothing else. And so if at all possible, I would recommend not having any big conversations, making any business deals or beginning any large projects this week. Next week, we'll start all over again under a new moon and things will sort out. Right now, I think it's wise to dip into your unconscious and try to gather a better understanding of maybe recent revelations or realizations that you've had. Why did those happen? What exactly did they mean? And ask yourself what you need right now, what you need from the universe, what you need from God, whatever your source is. And I think those are all good questions to ponder or even use to meditate with. Um, But you don't have to use that either. You can just lay in child's pose with beautiful music on. I even went on Apple Podcast, or Apple Podcast, Apple Music, and they have all kinds of amazing uh, guided meditations that you can do, or just sounds like frequency sounds that calm you down. So I think that's amazing. And then she's back. Hello. According to cafeastrology.com, this new moon, which squares with Sagittarius and Virgo, will be most intense for those with the following sun sign. Well, actually, no, your sun rising or moon in Gemini, Virgo, Sagittarius, and Pisces, specifically between 14 and 18 degrees of these mutable signs. So I'm 15 degrees Pisces. So it's definitely going to affect me. I will report back. Jenna is sad rising along with like three other of the people I love most in the world. So I'll let you know about all them. But like last week, it was very hard for Virgos. Virgos were having nightmares. Every, my husband, my daughter, my friend, like every Virgo I knew told me about a nightmare that they had last week. It's very strange. So really um, try to See what your subconscious is trying to tell you, basically. I mean, the tail end of that sounded really interesting. I can't (laughs) wait for you to report back. Um, We'll have to look at our YouTube channel and watch it. Yeah, exactly. So I think we should just dive in, right? Um, Today's case that we're discussing in part, um, I mean, not to give it away, but you're going to have to stay tuned not only this week, but next week to hear the full story of this crazy case and there's just yeah it was there was no way that this this story about Lori Vallows and Chad Daybell could fit in one episode there's just no way and we've been following it from the get-go calling each other like we've got we have this we've been researching for so long and we can't wait to bring you this story because it is just such a tangled web Oh, yes. Reality is truly stranger than fiction. So let's dive in. This is the case of Lori Valos and Chad Daybell. I'm Brittany Sheffrin. I'm Jenna Kaplan. And this is Murder in Retrograde. And for the full episode, you guys are going to have to go to Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts You hear part one. So yeah, what, what are your feelings as we've just finished? Um, what are your feelings about this? Like who, why? Here's my biggest question to you. Why do we not see a murder charge? That's a good question. Um, I think that it, well, I think that it was probably hard to determine a cause of death Mm -hmm. and maybe it was, or is st- they're still trying to tie it to them somehow? Or my fear is they didn't do it. They were smart enough to have somebody, her brother, do it. And they didn't do any of the so-called dirty work. Yeah. It's, 
incredibly frustrating. Um, I'm very, I can't remember if they're allowing cameras in the courtroom or if we even know that yet, because it's going to be happening come 2021. We Um, don't know, but there is something we do know. They were both being tried separately and they, their attorneys asked to be tried together and they agreed. So now it's going to be a joint trial. Well, so I think there's multi layers to that. So originally, um, Chad Daybell's attorney said, absolutely not. We do not want us the same trial. And then I think it came down to, I mean, the judge literally said it's going to save money um, to have a joint trial. And I think that's that's really what is fueling this. And it is interesting because I think they're right. And this at first I was like, that's kind of ridiculous, but it's the same evidence, the same story, the same, I mean, there, it really is. Unless they're, because the only reason I say that is because maybe they're planning on taking her to trial separately if they find proof of anything nefarious with her ex-husband. I think that would be a whole separate trial. I think this is just for the purpose of the kids. Right. Yeah, that, that could be. I mean, there's so many crimes to go over and... Yeah, maybe they're just trying to get this over with and get them put away for enough time that they don't have to dredge up all of those other things to go through, although justice needs to be served. I, I wish we had like a <laughs> a legal analyst. We do wow. have girlfriends that are attorneys to see what the positives would be of doing it jointly and what the negatives, negatives are. are on the attorney's part, like well, what's going to be difficult for them. So, so I know you're not like licensed or anything, but you're like my go-to with anything like psychology level. Do you I wish I was licensed? <laughs> well, you will be one day. Um, do you think there's any sort of mental illness with Lori in terms of like being able to just devour this information that was given to her to take it to such extremes? Or is that just something you see with cults in general or? Oh yeah. I mean, by no means do I have the... I have a, a lowly bachelor's degree in psychology, but yes, I would say there's mental illness involved because the things that she's gone through, it seems that even her childhood, her siblings, so many strange things have gone on, and yet there's very little emotion coming from her. So I have no idea, but if I were to guess, allegedly, I would say there's definitely some narcissistic tendencies if not sociopathic because it doesn't just I don't see any conscience whatsoever and then the brainwashing by Chad Daybell his mental illness is a whole other level with the end times and and that kind of stuff is bonkers to me I it's it's just it's really hard for me to understand how somebody can believe in that stuff but here's my question too, is like, it's just coming off of, we just did Nexium, right? And like, it's the same kind of shit with these guys. Like, do they really believe it? Or do they know that they can control people with these beliefs? Like, is it, is the end game to create a version of a cult for themselves? Or are they truly buying into this stuff and then thus trying to let everyone around them buy in? It's just, I don't think so. I don't think they truly buy into any of it. I think that they know it reminds me of the show we watched that we were talking about, The Undoing, like Hugh Grant's character. Um, they don't care at all. It's me, yeah. me, 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 me. That's all that they're ever thinking. Right. And even like their children, they have them for a reason, like to keep somebody or it. Pawns, and even that kind of yeah. stuff seems like it has happened. So, uh, I mean, it definitely seems like there was some sort of break, some, I don't know, psychotic or drug related or whatever when they went to Kauai and the kids were just nowhere to be found so footage is nuts they're just like like the I think the reporter says something along the lines of um everyone's worried about your kids and she's like that's nice like or something to the I effect think they of said like so people blase. are praying yeah, yeah people are praying for your kids that's nice yeah, why she's walking to the spa in Kauai and doesn't know where her kids are. And that, yeah, she had like no facial expression whatsoever. He never spoke. Yeah, well, they're just that's strange. probably going to go in his favor. The whole thing is bizarre. And the fact they're, st- I mean, not that it matters, but then I read that they were staying in like a luxury, overly expensive uh, suite while they were in Kauai. Like, I feel, it's just so many feelings and that part frustrated me my husband's from Kauai I was like why are they not arresting her I mean I know that people were 
all of the detectives, everyone was working in Idaho, but, and COVID was happening. It was just like the perfect storm Mm. of just too much going on. Yeah, and I think you're right. Cause it did, it did, it broke around what January is when this started yeah. coming out. And that was right when COVID talk yeah, was the, starting and ugh. the kids, the kids went missing like September, November. And so the grandparents didn't really bring anything. It didn't get going until December. And then we started hearing about it in January because that's when they were gallivanting around the globe. Oh gosh. The whole case is just mind boggling. And I know we get into it to the podcast. So I don't want to spend too much time, but I was just curious on your thoughts on that stuff because it's just the whole cult mindset is fascinating. And it is very interesting. And especially Mormonism, because a lot of people still consider Mormonism a cult. My nephew is in a religious studies class and they literally said, no, Mormonism is a cult. And I was like, Wow. Because back in the day, it was like, oh my gosh, if you said something like that. But I know there's offshoots and there's fundamentalists and things like that, but uh, I can't help but think cult. (laughs) I just can't. Same. I mean, when you, listen, I don't know a ton about it and I probably shouldn't be like, well, this is what I think because I don't know a ton about it. But from what I do know, it definitely sounds cult-like. Oh yeah. I, I grew up with so many Mormon friends and I will not even mention the the dysfunction, like the craziest stuff I've ever seen, like perfect from the outside and oh, then yeah. nothing but trouble on the inside. And then meanwhile, like you come over to my house as a kid, my parents were screaming at each other and it, everything was on the surface, you know, like nothing, nothing was hidden. And when I would go in those homes and everyone seemed nice and then it was like, oh my God, no, there's like corporal punishment and, oh, it was really... Um, interesting in a very small sample size of what I grew up with in Southern right. California. By no means am I blanketly saying anything about Mormons. Um, but I mean, I guess some, I was, but we're also <laughs> seeing some interesting sides of it on Bravo right now. <laughs> oh yeah. Are we ever, I mean, yeah. Real Housewives of Salt Lake City is, it's almost a bit too much for me. I love it. I'm completely devouring it. I love it. I think each person, and this is what I've heard from other people saying too, that I've really appreciate about a new fresh season is no one knows that there should be hiding their skeletons. They're all just letting them all out there and nobody's yeah. like realized that the, I don't think they realize that like how many people are seeing this and how much of their shit is getting brought up. Um, but they don't, I think that's happening because like when they go in to do these shows, they try to find at least a few friends like yeah. New York. They didn't all know each other. It was only a right. few friends. And this one, I feel like they picked all people that had no idea who each other was, like maybe only heard reputations. Yeah. So there's not really any loyalty. And so it's kind of just like balls to the wall fighting from the start like that. Jen Shaw chick is just, she's a lot. Much. She's a lot. She's a lot. She's a lot. Yeah. And it's, it's interesting. Well, anyways, we're not here to discuss Rob, but it, she is a lot. And that show is amazing. And I do love that they are showing some of, because there's, I think two girls on there that I would say are pretty transparent with like, you know, this is what Mormons expect. And then this is what's really going yeah. on. And then this is that it, it's, it's very interesting. Um, mm-hmm. But I really want to talk about is Middle Beach. Oh. Okay, I literally just finished it this morning because I fell asleep last night and I was so mad at myself because I was literally at six o'clock. I was like, I have two more hours. I have to watch it. And then some stuff happened at home, so I didn't get to watch it. Oh my. Yeah, God. okay. So, spoiler alert Murder on Middle Beach on HBO is the best true crime documentary I've seen. In a long yeah, time. At least a year. Yeah. Um, and it was only four episodes. Madison Hamburg is the guy that's doing it. His mother was murdered, and he's basically interviewing relatives and friends, and he finds out more about his family than he ever I'm probably wanted, wanted to. to. Yeah. yeah. And uh it was just so gripping. He was so brave. And the only thing is on my DVR, it cut off. So at the very end, he spoke to his father. He got off the phone and he was just, he said something like, I feel 
how did it end? Do you remember? Okay, like, yeah, spoilers, we're talking about the end. Um, so he hangs up and he basically him and his producer are just like he needs to say something or people are gonna have the perception that he's an he's, he's a murderer it. yeah i saw and that he hung up and i think because his dad hung up on him yeah and i think he was just like well shit like he's not i i think he's probably having realizations that his dad probably is some sort of way involved in this and if you're not any innocent person is gonna scream from the rooftops or if you're worried about your, you know, legal entanglements, get your lawyer involved and sit there and say, I'll answer questions, but I can't incriminate myself with this stuff here. And so that's what's frustrating, I'm sure, to him. And I think that a lot of people are going to see because he's not saying anything. And the way that he talked to him at the end, and I don't remember exactly how Madison was saying it, but he was just saying... I just want to know what happened to my mom and God, I wanted to reach through the TV and shake his dad. Like, how dare you talk about a narcissist doesn't care about his child at all. Never felt his heartstrings pulled by just let me know something. And his dad is shiftier than all get out. I won't talk about that. What's this? I'm getting out, like getting out of the car. He acts like a child. And then it was very eye opening to see his sister when she's like, I'm going to go upstairs now. Like, talk about an avoidant family yeah. they just don't talk about things yeah, so no, god only knows what he's done he i i think he's guilty of something whether it's something to do with the murder or some serious legal stuff with like money um yeah he, all those things that it, his mother had written about being afraid for her life and then it's and so then easy happens. for the to the dad be like well she was a drunk it's like yeah okay there's Ugh. people when they're drunk will do crazy shit but i don't necessarily think that they can i mean maybe they can i don't have enough experience with it but to create a whole other um world in a sense no. of all this financial stuff and to go through i mean i don't think there has a clear enough head to forge documents and forge um, a story. No, there were tax returns. There were all kinds of of documents that she could not have created. And it, it just looked like such a um, mafia related, like we'll have this corporation or Donald Trump, like, oh, like money laundering. Make all these stuff. shell companies. And, but like the hundreds of millions of dollars, it was so interesting. And then they said that it's an old scam where, uh, can you imagine living your life like that? Like scamming people in the Middle East for hundreds of millions of dollars? Like, no wonder he's so insane. But uh, and that's I just. Makes you realize he's probably guilty because he doesn't want to yeah. say anything. And then, oh, the part on the phone that broke my heart because he was like, he said something about this to his dad. He's like, I need to know if I'm going to be that. scared for my life. And he's like, not even answering him. As a parent, that is your job to protect your children. And to not say, listen, Madison, I can't get into this on a recording, but yes, you should be careful. You should be whatever, but nothing that I'm not getting into this. is like really all that doesn't saying. even make sense to me. Like, wouldn't you, I mean, if there is just say, sure. Yes. Always be careful. That was like yeah. th- leaving your child out in the cold, like. So I just, uh, it, it just blows my mind that you, so wait, did your, DVR, like that. did your DVR cut out right after that? You it didn't cut see out. all the updates at the end? No, nothing. Oh my God. What did it say? They got access to the police files. He got he access did. in October of this year. He has the police files. The son. Wait, everything or just the 911 call? Everything. Oh, all that was another him. thing. That detective, oh, oh, I hated scumbag. him. What a scumbag. Piece of shit. That, those are the cops that need to go. Well, it's like- Talk about not doing your job. The thing is so, and I was, I was livid during the scene where he brought in people who can help. And when you say, no, we've got it. And it's really, you're not doing anything like shame on you. Yeah. Shame on you. Cruel. It is awful because it's all about politics at that point of like, well, yeah. we're going to, it's our case and we're going to solve it. And, da, 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 and it's like, mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. It's like that old mentality with the Golden State Killer where was just Paul Holes was trying to get two jurisdictions to speak. No, we won't talk to them. It's like, for the love of God, what isn't about the you? number one thing, like help, like find justice. Like, 
uh, I don't letting your ego get in the way of of I, helping this poor boy feel better or he's well I loved that when he was like yeah I recorded it and the cops were like yes he had like his <laughs> body turned I would too I'd be like oh I'd be so scared I was so I was worried what they were gonna do they're so dumb like it takes somebody's phone if you're not if you're worried I mean we can do everything at a touch of a button like if you're I not know they're so worried about getting that perfect example Jenna talk about a stupid cop like not checking to see if somebody has anything like, like a, please or can you leave your, your phone pocket. outside yeah like that I, I need point. to go to the, I need to be a detective <laughs> Yes, you know no, that, for real. You know that meme where it's like, I always think I'm going to be a detective. I'm going to walk in with my wine and be like, the husband did it. <laughs> it's like all, all I can contribute. Oh my God. But, yeah. So it, yeah. if you haven't watched it, it is so you've got to watch Murder on Middle Beach. I hope there's a second season. I hope that it inspires other people to do this. Because... Well, I think that there will actually be momentum with this case because it says mm-hmm. at the very end, they got the case files. Him and his experts are going through 1,600 documents that there is in the case file. So it's going to take time, obviously, for them to get through that. But because now that they have access to it, they can hire private detectives or private experts to help and to solve it. And I think I'm going to say it right now within the next year, we're going to see yeah. something happening with this case. And I think Especially it's since he was so good at what he did and he was charismatic and so many people in that family were very interesting um, that I'm sure there will be sister. more series and stuff like that. Oh, and the sister in the wedding and oh, I liked that. Well, I was talking about the crazy sister. Oh, sister. I was talking about his sister, Allie. <laughs> no, yeah, she's, I'm glad that it seems like she's worked through her stuff and she's been doing the healthy thing. She by seems very staying, healthy. Like, very healthy. her boundaries. And I think it's really big of her that she's like, it doesn't bother me. She's sick. I understand. Like, that why was, that's. No happening. matter how healthy you are, that what you could still see in her micro expressions that she was like getting upset who wouldn't being accused of murdering their mother but um no I think that showed such a high level of evolution of mind body spirit and then my god her fiance was just like oh Oh my god they're so cute you could just feel the love and he you know I was totally crying that out of her (laughs) oh I was well I mean after you lose a parent it's just hard to watch that kind of stuff I was in the fetal position I was crying so hard it's probably my mom probably somewhere cut off my dvr so i could not probably my breath. I, was I was crying just gonna, so hard i was just gonna say it's interesting did you not see then the part where he's like giving a speech at the 10 year anniversary that's what okay because I, 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 of- I gave a speech for my mom and so i was like i just couldn't handle it i just sobbed and sobbed and sobbed and and then when he got all the way to the end without crying it's really amazing how you can just have the strength to do that but then after you become a puddle of mush Mm. but it's not the same thing i lost my mom to cancer his mother was murdered it's each losing a parent is losing a parent no no no. they're equal don't diminish it because it's equally is is traumatizing both it's not like they they were old and fell asleep in either situation yeah you know what i mean it's would be be nice to yourself i did was thinking about you actually during that scene and i was like totally crying and it's just oh it's I have so much respect for this. I want to say he's a kid, but he's, what, how old is he? He's like I a know. grown ass man, but like he's doing such a good job of getting the story out there, but also working hard so that there's not Reddit speculation about his sister. And, you know, I think he's being very responsible in what oh, he's yeah. showing and what he's doing. And, you know, you can't say that about all documentaries and information that's out there so no even hearing his producer speak he was so thoughtful and so um it seemed like had madison's best interest at heart because i'm sure he was terrified that whole time like am i just blowing up my family with this documentary but i hope that it brought them some sort of healing i do too i thought i think some healing and i think now like i said there's going to be some momentum i truly believe um yeah and not to totally switch gears, but you sent me into a spiral last night. I was calling my South African family member. Uh, <laughs> so why don't yeah. you tell the people the story you called me with last night that I was like, what, what, what? <laughs> yeah. So 
I'm not the biggest UFO person. My sister has always been obsessed, so I know about everything. But um, it's just not that interesting to me, I guess. Well, and I mean, I fully believe in it. I fully, yeah. I'm not uh, delusional enough to think there's nothing else out there. But I've never really read an experience where I thought, that sounds really believable. And then I heard about this. So in Zimbabwe, do you remember the year? It was in the 90s? Okay, 1994 at a, a nursery school in Zimbabwe, um, three flying saucers landed in the broad daylight and two alien beings came out and all of I think it was like 50 people saw children and and teachers and they didn't say anything but everybody felt this warm sensation of love and then they both everybody got the message of you're using technology too much technology is destroying your planet you need to stop and you need to spread the word and then they left and an amazing Harvard uh, psychologist, psychiatrist, I don't remember, went down there, Dr. John Mack, and interviewed all of these kids and, and teachers. And he said there was no way that they could have all made up this story to make it sound so similar. He, and he was, a, I believe, child psychologist. So he did drawings, he spoke with them, and he studied them for so, until his death. And then, and these people are still very close. They're very close. They talk all the time. They keep in touch because they share this experience. And most people didn't believe them. And I can't believe I had never heard of it. Same. And you'd never heard of it either, right? No. And then my mother-in-law, my husband, none of them had ever heard of it. And I mean, not that they lived there. Well, first of all, never were they in Zimbabwe, but yeah. Um, to I don't know. I feel like when something happens from a an area that you're so kind of from, like you hear about these, and none of them had ever heard of it. And I was just, I, I there's not a ton of information out there. I was googling up a storm last night, and I think the one article that you sent me is the only one. But there's not even a lot of talk about like what each person's saying that exactly there. I I don't know. It's so crazy because when I did read in that article too is something along there the other warning was like the environment and it's yes. interesting fast forward to where we are now i just watched the social dilemma who which blew my mind have you seen it yeah oh my god i like so hearing that after watching something like that and i'm like we're gonna we're gonna implode we're dying <laughs> we're imploding i'm gonna hopefully be six feet under when all this shit goes down and I, like, what are you talking about? You're sitting here at making a podcast while the shit's going down. It's happening no, all around no. us. No, I'm in denial and um, I don't want to be here. <laughs> I know. I know. And it is the best, you, because you sorry. better believe we're going to research more of this and bring it to you. Well, so, okay. So, aliens. Okay. I, I have, I've read uh, quite a few things. I believe it's so fascinating to me because I think they, what I've read is they don't show themselves often or ever yeah. because they know that even though that their intentions are good, we will think that it's bad and we will create chaos. Yeah. And it's interesting that a number of the sightings are always around when we are using military weapons or drills or anything with like our war type um, equipment. They're yeah. always spotted, like checking us out and be like, what are you doing? What, like, I think that they're very concerned that we are going to implode the world. I swear to you. Oh yeah. That, like they have good intentions, I believe. And I probably sound like a total nutcase, but. No, I don't think you do at all. I do too. I mean, having that experience and, and the people that worked in this in nursery school, a lot of them were British women and they they are laughing when they're telling their story. They're like this. I never thought I would say this. This yeah. sounds ridiculous, but this is what I experienced. And there is one girl, I think that was a child at the time that I found an article saying that she's had multiple interactions since then. Wow. I've heard that too, that people have more than one experience. Ooh, I it's, it's, Ooh. It, Tauruses are very into <laughs> aliens. Have you always been interested? Always. How can you not be interested? It's always How can you not fascinating wonder? because it's like, what? A, where are they? What are they doing? Why aren't they here with us? Like, I don't yeah. know. And then 
on my road trip, uh, when was that? I don't even know. A couple months, six months, six months ago or whatever it was, we drove through Roswell and I was like, oh, <laughs> But wow. nothing was open because of COVID, but just being there and seeing like the vibe of the town is so funny and cute because it's like this little bitty town and at like gas stations and stuff, there are little green statues of yeah. aliens everywhere. And I just think it's so funny that they've like embraced this kind of... I don't know, environment, but I want to like go to Area 51. Like I am, yeah. I would be the president that's like, show me the UFO files, yeah. show them to me. Uh, I just saw Obama being interviewed by Colbert and Colbert's like, aliens tell us they're real, right? Or whatever. And Obama was so funny. He's like, you know what? That used to be the craziest thing. That was the thing where it was like, well, when I'm president, I could finally find out if there are aliens. And he said, now the craziest um, conspiracy theory is that voting is real. Oh, and that you I can- know. <laughs> it's so funny. Like the conspiracies have gone That's like the roof. baby eating. Like it used to just aliens. What? That's possible. You, you know that, right? The crazy... What? um right think that biden yeah they think that what? biden and all of the liberals eat baby's blood to stay young you don't oh know my, this no no it's very caught they like wholeheartedly believe it's a related to pizzagate which you can literally go to that pizza parlor and see that there is no basement i i don't understand my I eyes mean, are rolling so far into the back of my head right now i know bananas but let me ask you on that kind of same note because okay so the whole thing with the presidents is at the end of their term they are allowed to have access to whatever it is that they wanted to know that's like a parting gift almost right like they get to find out i forget it's there's like a term for it but they get to find out something like i think the clintons i think bill has alluded to he did go down the alien route like i think they all never heard of this i have to real? find the terminal yeah yeah, yeah. on there and because there's also i mean not to get to present time but there's also speculation that they're not going to allow Trump to maybe do this as a courtesy because <laughs> they, don't, not. they don't necessarily try. I mean, I don't know. So anyways, um, if you were president and you were getting this gift, if you will, what would you want to know? That's so interesting. I, I have a, a, I just asked my sister this. I think I asked you too. When and if you make it to the pearly gates, what's the first true crime oh. thing you're going to say? Like, who killed John Bonet? Who, like, what are you going to ask? So, you, wait, you, what did you just so ask many. me? Okay, ADD. So, if you're president, you what would I want to know? What, like, what would you want to know? Like, what's the top secret of the world that you would want to know about? Like, I, I'm there. The first thing I thought of was, did the CIA really kill JFK? But I don't think you could find that out. Um, too, the CIA people when they're okay so going back to aliens they're the ones that have been interviewed have said like even presidents don't have um, authority for some of the top secret information so sometimes the CIA will just say sorry you don't clearance but you could ask yeah them. I I certainly hope that they do that a lot lately a lot <laughs> but I um, sure have to ask about the aliens I'd be like take me to area 51 for my tour please and that show would me be everything. your cool Yes, you would want I to, yeah. like that. And I don't want to know how many times we've almost died from world yeah. possibilities. I don't need to know. I will be in delusion. I don't need to know. Yeah. But true crime, what would be yours? I mean. I think you and I actually might have the same answer for this. John Bonet is always the first thing that comes to my mind, but also Madeline McCann. What are you thinking of? Delphi. Oh my goodness, of course. That to me is almost more, and maybe because it's just That's newer, number one for me, yeah. But the John Bonet, I feel like there's so many other, like, I, I don't know. For some reason, the Delphi one is just, I don't know. There's something about it. I'm like, just tell me Because it happened. feels so close because yeah. you we can see the and hear the person. That's why. Yeah. That, I, yeah, I definitely... I mean, I want to know it all, but yeah, you're right. I think it would be Delphi. I want there to be some updates with this. Like what's, what, why, why are we not there yet? I don't know, but I hope so too. Oh man. All right. So do you have anything else for me? 
I don't think so. It sure has been fun dishing some true crime. This is my best part of my week. Fun, the highlight of my week. And what else is coming down the pipeline for us? What else do we have anything to tell the people? Oh, I know. I think what's after, right? Are we, I don't think maybe we haven't discussed it. (laughs) What? Go for it. Are we going to talk about, um, why am I forgetting his first name? Shape's name. Brian Schaefer. Brian, Brian Schaefer. Yes, 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 yes. So I'm very uh, interested in Brian Schaefer. He was a med student. Um, oh gosh, was it Ohio? What state was it? No, no, Wisconsin. Sorry, I forgot. But, <laughs> but um, amazing kid, was in med school, uh, went into a club one night and there were cameras on every en- exit he never left, was never found, has never been seen from since. And it's also loosely uh, related to, to yeah. possibly Miley. the happy face killers. Dun, dun, dun. Stay tuned. It's going to be good. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye.